Welcome to Adobe Creative Cloud Live. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. With that said, we're going to be taking a look at some new things inside of Photoshop. I'm only going to show you three today because I got more to show you on the next stream. So we're going to do three today for photographers and tomorrow I'll be back on the CC design page to show three things that are new for designers. And we'll just keep going from there because there's more than six things. So lots of things to show, but uh, just trying to not give it to you all in one blast, you know, just kind of break it out. And that way we can spend a little bit more time on each feature than to spend only a few seconds because we're trying to fit it all in. All right. So with that said, uh, Roman, Marcos, and everyone else is in the room. Welcome, everyone. And let's go ahead and dive in and get, get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my computer. I've got Photoshop CC 2018 running. This update, of course, came out uh, about two weeks ago now at max. And um, I'm on my welcome screen here, and I want to point out one of the new things. One of the new things is on the welcome screen, but even if you don't have the welcome screen up, I'm going to show you a way to get to it, which I would have never guessed. But I'm going to show you a good way to get to it, even if you don't have the welcome screen. Because sometimes people turn off the screen because they just want Photoshop to be Photoshop when no document is open. But anyway, if you click, uh, if you go down here, you'll see your recent photos, you'll see your CC files, and a new option, Lightroom Photos. That's brand new as of two weeks ago. What this will allow you to do is access your Lightroom synced photos. Whether you're using Lightroom Classic and you're syncing smart previews, or you're using uh, an, or full resolution raw files from your mobile devices, or you're using the new Lightroom CC where you're syncing the original resolution files, no matter what they are, they will appear here. So I've seen all my albums and folders here, including my most recent photos. Now this one actually wasn't originally a Lightroom photo. This is one from yesterday's Halloween stream. I did this as a Photoshop composite from scratch using Adobe stock images. And um, then at the end, I just um, went ahead and shared it, which is another new feature. I shared it to Lightroom from Photoshop. But uh, since it's in Lightroom and it was one of my most recent ones, I can actually go ahead and click on it and import the selected. And when I import the selected, not only does it bring it over, let's switch back to my regular workspace here for a second. Not only does it bring it over, but it brings over all the layers for it too. So that was a PSD that we worked on yesterday with all the layers. I w and I'll give you a bonus tip. I wasn't gonna show this today, but the way I got this into Lightroom from Photoshop, because it started out from Photoshop from scratch, is there's a brand new share panel inside of Photoshop CC. So one of the options to share is uh, add to Lightroom photos. So it's grayed out because this one's already in there. But um, if you want, you can send your photos or composites that you work on in Photoshop right to Lightroom. That is a benefit. That is one that, um, that we can count for today for photographers. So you got dual direction. You can create things in Photoshop, send them to Lightroom, or open things directly from Lightroom. Now, let's, I, I said I would show you the way to do it in case you're not looking at your welcome screen. Like, I don't have the welcome screen up now. Does that mean I have to close everything down just to get to my Lightroom photos? No. Um, you can actually get to it from the search icon. If you go in the upper right hand corner, normally we use the search icon to search for Adobe Stock, search for tutorials, search for things inside of Photoshop. Well, what they added to that in addition was the ability to get to your Lightroom photos. So you can search all Photoshop, learn content, stock photos, or your Lightroom photos. So you have the albums that are here. I'm in my Adobe Lightroom CC album. And of course I can open up photos from there as well. Um, so pretty cool to be able to do this directly inside of um, Photoshop and uh, have access to those Lightroom photos without having to go to Lightroom first to go ahead and send them over to uh, Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and close this for a second. And I just want to show you one more thing is that a couple of these, like these of the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, these were shot with my iPhone using the Lightroom camera. So these are actually RAW files. When I double click on one of these, you'll notice that it's downloading that file from the cloud as a DNG. So um, the last one I did was a Photoshop file. This is an actual raw file coming in as well. So don't think of it as, oh, I'm just gonna get those low resolution previews. 
That's, all, that's what you'll get if that's all you have. But if you have the original raw file or original file synced, you will get those as well. So it's opened this up in Camera Raw inside of Photoshop. And I now can, of course, do all my Camera Raw things to it. Uh, for example, make that sky just a little bit more dramatic there. And let's bring the exposure down on that and just make it a little bit more gloomy, gloomy day, dehaze. There we go. All right. So, and of course, if I want to open that now, I'd open that up in Photoshop and away we go. All right. Um, so that's number one, access to not only your Lightroom photos coming in, but also being able to, uh, bonus tip, being able to share back to Lightroom anything that you do or you've created inside of Photoshop. The next one is an improvement in an area that I use Photoshop a lot and it's one that I've heard you complain about and it's one that um, the team took seriously and addressed and that is Select and Mask. Uh, for many, Select and Mask works fine. For some, Select and Mask doesn't work as good as Refine Edge used to. And the goal was to address those concerns, to basically get Select and Mask up to where it should be so it, it works across the board consistently. And what it really was, was some images worked really well with it, and that's why people didn't complain. And some images that used to work better with Refined Edge didn't work as well with Select and Mask, and that's why people did complain. So let's go ahead and uh, go to my libraries here. And in my libraries, I'm gonna go to my Adobe Stock library where, we, where I'll use that same image we used yesterday, and we'll go ahead and mask it out. So we'll open up this image. Actually, no, let me do it, let me do it a different way. Instead of opening the image, we'll drag it over. We'll drag over this image and we'll have it cover part of our Mercedes Benz. We'll just use the Mercedes Benz uh, as the background there. We'll go ahead and put that in. And one of the tricky things whenever you're doing this, of course, would be hair. Her hair is not that flowing in the front, so that's not, that's not a problem. But she is, uh, she's got on dark clothes, dark hair on a dark background. That's normally very difficult to do. Um, but I'm going to risk it and try it with Select and Mask and see what happens. So uh, if I, all I have to do with that layer selected is go to my Select menu, come down to Select and Mask, and um, it will take me by default into my onion skin mode, which is showing me how much is selected, which is nothing at this point, how much is not selected or anywhere in between. And so I'm just going to go ahead using the Quick Mask brush that's already here and just start making my selections of her. All right, and she's got this red cloak or something going on behind her. And see, I almost forgot her shoulder because her shoulder kind of blends into the background. Let's get her shoulder in there and we get a good, oh, don't forget the eye. <laughs> don't, forget, don't leave her out her eye. She would not like that. And let's get that in there. Now, of course, I could turn it down or turn it up to see what that looks like. So far, so good. Uh, we're going to go in and just refine this a bit more. I'm going to go in and turn on Smart Radius, smooth that out just a bit. And I want to see what it also looks like from the mask perspective. Black and white. And that way I can also mess with the edges that way. And I can also see it on white. And with it on white, I can also turn up the transparency. So I can see what that would look like. And I can see I'm still missing part of that cloak and this is why I sometimes view it in different ways to see what else I'm missing. I'm missing like the gold border around that and that will kind of just blend in the way it's supposed to. And also I could take out the color in between our fingers there but for the sake of time I'm not going to bother with that right now. All right and then I'm missing part of the eyebrow there. Let's get that in there and this helps me really visualize and see what I may or may not be getting. All right, so um, you also notice that Quick Select is gonna be much faster in this area. And what I wanna output this to is a new layer with a mask. Uh, so whether I'm viewing this on white, whether I'm viewing it as an onion skin, doesn't matter. When I output it, I will have the new selection, the new cutout um, that is, has been done on this image now as a mask. So I still have the original layer. I have the new layer that it just made with the uh, mask that it just created from that. So I invite you to go give um, Selected Mask a new shot, you know, with the 2018 update. See if it's any better for you and let us know if it is or isn't. Uh, we like to hear praise as well as criticism. So if there is something that's not working for you, let us know. But if it is working better, let us know that as well. Uh, for me, it's definitely faster 
and I'll have to experiment more with hair, but it certainly seems faster and better so far in the few times I've tried it. All right, so selecting mask will definitely be one of those things that people will uh, get a kick out of. And actually, I wasn't going to combine her on the uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I was going to use one of my other images here, something maybe like this. We'll drop this in and kind of put her on that kind of background. There we go. All right, that's a little bit better background than the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. All right, lighting aside, um, check out the cutout and selected mask features. Okay, now let's go in and go to our next. Um, you think this will work for you? Great, uh, grow. I'm glad this will work for you. All right, let's try our third and final option, which is near and dear to my heart as well because I like shooting 360 panos. So if you you if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably have seen them, especially here on Facebook those panoramas where you can actually turn them around. You can go a full 360 degrees. Now you can make them a variety of different ways. There are 360 degree cameras like from Ricoh and Samsung makes one as well. There are, uh, there are um, like on your iPhone, you can even shoot a panel. You might not be able to get the full 360, but you can get a nice panel that you can start turning around on once it's on Facebook. What if you need to edit one of those? Well, what they produce is a flat image. So let me show you what it looks like um, for what it produces. Let's see, I've got one here. If you were to just open one of those up, this is what it would look like. I actually took this one with my uh, Mavic Pro drone and some software that actually made the drone take all the shots. Then I used some software to stitch it together and make this 360. So once this is posted, you can actually turn it around and it looks great. But when you open this in Photoshop, you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? It's like, yeah, I can go in and I can see kind of the distorted areas and, and make some corrections, but it would be much better if it weren't distorted. So now there is a 360 workflow. You can either get to it by um, going to your uh, 3D menu. Yep, we put it under 3D. Put it in your 3D menu, spherical panorama, brand new option. And if you already have the file open, you can say new panorama, um, from selected layers. And when you do that, it'll take you into this mode where you can now, right in Photoshop, experience your 360. Now, this works, but what I don't like about doing it this way is it keeps the image wide. I kind of like seeing it more as the uh, square or not so wide uh, aspect ratio that we would see on Facebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna do it a different way. That way works, you can edit it and that will be fine, but I'm gonna try it one more way. Instead of opening it first and then creating the 360 layer from it, I'm gonna to go to the 3D menu and I'm gonna go spherical panorama, import panorama, meaning open it this way. This will be the best way to do it. And if I go ahead and grab that same file, it gives me the settings for it, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, and then it will give me that more of a traditional square uh, or not square, but four by three aspect ratio uh, that allows me to experience the panorama kind of more realistically the way it would look once posted. So once you're here, you can do whatever you would normally do. So if I wanted to take out some of those orange jackets there, maybe they're distracting my photo, I can use my spot healing brush and just I have a tourist remover here. So you remove the tourists. I'll keep the ones on the bridge. They kind of look cool there. But let's go back to my turning thingy here. Let's get rid of those people looking up at my drone. We ha can have no witnesses for this. So we have to get rid of the witnesses. And I'm joking, but you get the idea. All right, let's go ahead and turn that some more. Got a nice cave there. And I'm told that that is not man-made. That's naturally occurring. And if I wanted to put something in the cave, I could. So for example, I can go back to my uh, Terry White library and in my Terry White library, if I scroll all the way down, scroll, 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 I've got my Terry White logo there. So I can pull that in, um, scale that down, put that inside the cave just for fun, and go ahead and commit to it and merge it down. So it's important to merge the layers down, otherwise that'll be a separate layer, not part of the 360. All right, so now that will move around with the 360 and away we go. So that is the way you can edit a 360 degree image um, without having to edit it flat. And when you export it back out, it should maintain 
the 360 degree attributes. So when I go to window and I go to, I'm sorry, when I go to 3D, I keep wanting to go to window for some reason. When I go to 3D, spherical panorama, export panorama, it should give me um, the ability to save it and put it where I want and give it those same settings. Now I'm gonna try this with one more image. Let's go ahead and uh, go to 3D. And let's do another spherical panorama and import panorama one more time. And once we get our um, import dialog box, I'm gonna choose one of the ones here. Not that one, I think it was this one, not that one, this one. This is actually from my studio. I was doing a photo shoot, I'm over there. The subject's here, and it's just a 360 degree of the whole room. When I go ahead and import that in as a 360, this one was actually taken with, I believe, my Ricoh um, Theta, Theta S camera. I can go ahead and move this around, I see the big light, I see me with a big camera, I see the tethering on Lightroom, and once again, I can edit this any way I want. So if I wanted to make adjustments, change the color, do whatever I want to do, put, put in other objects, remove other objects, whatever I wanted to do, I could. So for example, there's a temperature sensor right up there above the logo, so let's put the logo in, lock that down, and let's use our spot removal tool to, our spot removal, the healing brush, spot healing brush, to get rid of that sensor or that wall switch or that smoke detector or whatever else I want to clear out of the room. So you get the idea. Edit to your heart's content. You should make any changes you want. Add whatever you want to the photo. Let's blend that in a little bit better. And away you go. So then once you're done, you would just simply go to your 3D menu. We're going to spherical panorama, export, and we're going to call this one uh, Adobe Live. JPEG, and we'll put that in the same folder where I had the original, export it out. Now, if we head over to Facebook, and I'm on my Facebook fan page, by the way, which is Terry White uh, Fans, facebook.com slash Terry White Fans. If I go here and I can just say uh, the resulting 360 degree photo from today's live stream. All right, so I'll just click add a photo. There's the one called Adobe Live. We'll go ahead and open it up. It knows it's a 360, hopefully. Yep, see the little globe there. Once we get a preview, there it is. Um, then we can actually click on it to edit it and you can actually pick your starting point where you want Facebook to start displaying this for people to move around. So there's the logo, we know it's real. Light switch is gone, smoke detector is gone. Uh, so I'm going to start this right here and save. All right, so now that that's been saved, if I were to go ahead, once I wait for it to be saved, if I were to go ahead and publish it, if you go to my fan page right about now, <laughs> you should be able to see that 360 and experience it in 360, all edited from Photoshop. So that's uh, facebook.com slash Terry White fans. And those are your three features for photographers. Not the only three, but three of my favorites in the new Photoshop CC 2018. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow where I'm going to talk about um, three new features for, or three or more features for designers in the new Photoshop CC 2018. I'll be doing that on facebook.com slash Adobe CC, as in Creative Cloud, Adobe CC Design. That's the page I'll be on tomorrow, so if you go ahead and like that page now, you'll go ahead and get the notification of that when it's live. So, glad you guys could join me. Um, Mona, you're just getting here, so I'm about to say goodbye, but if you watch the replay in two seconds, you'll see it from the beginning. All right, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. We'll also catch you tomorrow for that second part for designers. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Bye.